Hi everyone, welcome to One Stop Mathematical Solution. Today we are going to solve CSIR Net Mathematics June 2014 question paper. In this video, we have only dealt with the abstract algebra part. First question, question 33. If n is a positive integer such that the sum of all positive integers a is satisfying 1 less than or equal to a less than or equal to n and gcd of a n is equal to 1 is equal to 240 n then the number of summons namely phi of n. So we have given a positive integer n if the sum of integers which satisfy these two conditions is equal to 240n then we have to find the value of phi of n. So first of all we look into the concepts used. We know the sum of all positive integers which is less than n such that it is co-prime to n that is gcd of a and n is equal to 1 is given by the formula n by 2 into phi of n. So here in this question they have given the value of that to be 240n. So substitute that so we will get n by 2 into phi of n is equal to 240n. So from this we will get phi of n is equal to 480. So now we will check the correct option. So the correct option is fourth one. Question 34. The total number of non-isomorphic groups of order 122 is. So we have to find how many non-isomorphic groups are there for this group. So first of all we will look into the concept used. If order of g is equal to pq where pq are primes, p less than q and p divides q minus 1. Then g is isomorphic to zpq where zpq is a abelian group as well as a cyclic group and g is isomorphic to dq where dq is a non-abelian group as well as non-cyclic group. So if a group is of order 2p where p is a prime number greater than 2 then there are only two non-isomorphic group. One is isomorphic to dp we know dp is a non-abelian group of order 2p and another one is cyclic group. Which is which implies a abelian group. So we will move on to the question now. So they have given the order of g to be 122. So here I am using the first concept to um, find how many non-isomorphic groups. So first of all I am prime factorizing it. So we can write it as 2 into 61. Here 2 is less than 61 and 2 divides 60. Therefore g is isomorphic to z1 122 which is an abelian as well as cyclic group and g is isomorphic to d61 which is a non-abelian and non-cyclic. So therefore we got two non-isomorphic groups for the 122. You can also use the second concept. If you use the second concept it, uh, the order should be of the form 2p. Here the order is of the form 2p itself. So there are only two non-isomorphic groups and you can directly state the answer. So we will check the correct option. So the correct option is 1. Next question, question 39. Let G denote the group of all automorphism of the field F3 per 100 that consists of 3 per 100 elements. Then the number of distinct subgroups of G is equal to. So we have given G to be the automorphism on the field F3. 3 per 100 then we have to find how many subgroups are there for g so first of all we we'll look into the concepts used we know the automorphism of f p per n is isomorphic to z by n z and the number of subgroups of z n is given to be tau of n that is divisors of n so if n is equal to n1 per alpha 1 n2 per alpha 2 etc up to n k per alpha k then tau of n is given by the formula equal to alpha 1 plus 1 into alpha 2 plus 1 etc up to alpha k plus 1 so here they are given g to be automorphism on f3 per 100 therefore g is isomorphic to z by 100 z by this concept we know that 100 can be written as 2 square into 5 square therefore number of distinct subgroups of g is equal to tau of 100 by this concept and tau of 100 can be written by this uh, formula that is equal to 2 plus 1 into 2 plus 1 that is equal to 3 into 3 that is equal to 9. So we got number of distinct subgroup as 9. So we will check the correct option. 
so the correct option is fourth one next question question 40 let p and q be distinct primes then so we are given two distinct primes p and q then we have to find which of the following statement is correct so first of all we will look into the concepts used for is it n where n is a composite number the ideals are given by set of zero and uh, ideal generated by d where d is the divisors of n and prime ideals are given by ideal generated by p where p is a prime divisor of n and maximal ideals are essentially the prime ideals that is maximal ideals are ideals generated by p and z by n z is isomorphic to z n so in this question they have asked for the ideals and prime ideals and maximal ideals of z by p square q z therefore z by p square q z is isomorphic to z p square q and p square q is a composite number therefore ideals can be written from this concept so the ideals are 0 and the divisors of p square q the divisors of p square q are p q p q and p square q so we got the ideals now prime ideals are the prime divisors of p square q so prime ideals are ideals generated by p and ideal generated by q maximal ideals are essentially the prime ideals so we got five ideals two prime ideals and uh, two maximal ideals so now we'll check the correct options so the correct option is third one next question question 84 let f of x equal to x power 4 plus 3 x cube minus 9 x square plus 7 x plus 27 and let p be a prime and f p of x denote the corresponding polynomial with coefficients in z by p z then so we have given a polynomial f of x and f p of x is the corresponding polynomial in z by p of z then we have to find which of the following statements are correct so first of all we we'll look in the concepts used f is a field and f of x is a polynomial in capital f of x then polynomial is irreducible over f if and only if f of x doesn't have a zero over f and if f of x equal to a naught plus a one x plus a two x square plus etc up to a n x bar n then p by q forms the root of f of x if p divides a naught and q divides a n so we will check how to do this question now so they have given f of x here so first option is asking whether f2 of x is irreducible over z2 so first of all find the corresponding polynomial f2 of x in z by 2 z that is take modulo 2 for this polynomial for every coefficients so we will get it as this is equal to x power 4 plus x cube plus x square plus x plus 1 so when you take modulo for minus 9 you add 2 till you get a positive number that is what is done here so finally you get 9 minus 9 mod 2 as 1 so that is replaced here so we'll get this polynomial now we check whether it has a zero in z2 so substitute the elements of z2 0 and 1 in place of x so we got f2 of 0 as 1 and f2 of 1 is equal to 5 which is equal to 1 under z2 therefore both under 0 and 1 we got a non-zero non-zero number therefore it doesn't have a zero over z2 therefore f2 of x is irreducible over z2 now second question is asking whether f of x is irreducible over q of x so we have taken the polynomial f of x so it is asking about uh, reducible irreducible property over rationals so i am taking a rational root suppose it have a rational root p by q then p divides a naught a naught means the co constant term so p divides 27 and q divides a n that is coefficient of x power 4 that is q divides 1 therefore this implies roots are of the form plus or minus 1 plus or minus 3 plus or minus 9 plus or minus 27 but for all of these uh, roots the value of f is a non-zero therefore f of x doesn't have a root in 
rational number therefore f of x is irreducible over q now third one is f3 of x is irreducible over z2 so find corresponding polynomial f3 of x in z by 3z that is take coefficients modulo 3 so when we take that you are getting x power 4 plus x now check whether f has f3 of x has root in z3 that is substitute all the elements of z3 so when you substitute 0 i am getting it as 0 therefore 0 is a 0 of f3 of x therefore f3 of x is reducible over z3 it is obviously an irreducible polynomial in z so now we'll check the correct options so the correct options are 1 2 and 4 Next question, question 85. Suppose f plus dot is a finite field with 9 elements. Let g is equal to f plus and h is equal to f minus 0 dot. Denote the underlying additive and multiplicative groups respectively. Then, so we are given a finite field f and g and h are its additive and multiplicative group. Then we have to find which of the following option is correct. So first of all, we will look into the concepts used. So, if f is a finite field of order p n, then the additive group f is isomorphic to z p cross z p cross etc. up to z p for n times, and f star the multiplicative group is isomorphic to z p power n minus one. And note that z n is isomorphic to z by n z. So, in this question, they have given order of f to be 9. So, I can write this as 3 square. So, g is equal to the additive group f plus. So, g is isomorphic to z3 cross z3 2 times. And z3 is isomorphic to z by 3z cross z by 3z. And h is equal to the multiplicative group f minus z0 dot. Therefore, h is isomorphic to z 3 square minus 1 which is equal to z8 and we know z8 is isomorphic to z8 to z by this concept. So g is isomorphic to z by 3z cross z by 3z and h is isomorphic to z by 8 to z. So now we will check the correct options. So the correct options are 1 and 4. Next question, question 90. For positive integers m and n, let fn is equal to 2 power 2 power n plus 1 and gm is equal to 2 power 2 power m minus 1. Then which of the following statements are true? So we are given two equations fn and gm. Then we have to find which of them are correct. So we will check how to do this question. So first option is asking whether fn divides gm whenever m greater than n. So we will check that. So we know that a power 6 minus b power 6 is equal to a power 3 into 2 minus b power 3 into 2. So this can be written as a cube whole square minus b cube whole square. So this is like a square minus b square form. So this can be split as a minus b into a plus b form. That is equal to a cube minus b cube into a cube plus b cube. So we have gm is equal to 2 power 2 power m minus 1. Now I am replacing 2 power m as 2 power m minus 1 into 2. So similar like this. Now I can write this as 2 power 2 power m minus 1 whole square minus 1. So this is like a square minus b square form. So a minus b into a plus b can be written. So this is equal to 2 power 2 power m minus 1 minus 1 into 2 power 2 power m minus 1 plus 1. So this implies fn divides gm whenever m is greater than n. Now second option is whether gcd of fn and gm is equal to 1 whenever m not equal to n so i am taking m to be 2 here and n to be 1 so find corresponding f1 and g2 here so f1 is equal to 2 power 2 power 1 plus 1 that is equal to 5 and g2 is 2 power 2 square minus 1 that is equal to 15 so when we take gcd we are getting it as 5 so whenever n 
m not equal to m we are get not getting gcd as 1 it is not always true so th third option is whenever m not equal to m whether gcd of fn and F fm equal to 1 so for n not equal to m we have 2 power n not equal to 2 power m which implies 2 power 2 power n not equal to 2 power 2 power m which implies 2 power 2 power n plus 1 not equal to 2 power 2 power m plus 1 which implies fn not equal to fm whenever n not equal to m therefore gcd of fn comma fm is equal to 1 whenever m not equal to n and the last option is whether gm divides fn whenever m less than n so we'll check that so i'm taking m as 1 and uh, n as 2 so find corresponding f2 and g1 and we we get that g1 doesn't divide f2 when m is less than n so the correct options are 1 and 3